Good morning, Eleanor. Buddy. Get up, buddy. I have treats. Come on. Come on, buddy. Hey. <laughs> You're getting a little belly, Eleanor. You're getting a little tubby. You're getting a little tubby. Hi, buddy. Oh. <laughs> It's all right, Eleanor. It's all right. Hey, handsome. What are you doing down here under the cat bed? What are you doing? What are you doing hanging out under the bed? <laughs> you want to get under the sheets? Hmm? Come on, under the sheets. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. Uh, today is Vlogtober, day 27. I'm at the pottery studio here. Um, I fully intended on just picking up the bowl that I glazed last week, but apparently it hasn't been fired yet. Uh, and then um, I have one little teeny tiny little um, bisque bowl that I want to glaze uh, today. And that's really it. Um, I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes, but I'm going to go into the pottery studio, glaze that bowl, and then probably go get breakfast somewhere because I haven't eaten yet, of course. Uh, and um, we'll see what the day brings. All right, let's go. Okay, here's that little bowl I just told you about. It's a cute little bowl. It's like a little miniature rice bowl. I had painted the foot of the bowl, which I really like a lot, black with uh, black underglaze before it was fired. So that's now part of the bowl itself. It won't come off, but I'm going to paint the bowl just in this blue celadon. Uh, this um, cobalt celadon that I used on that teapot recently. Hey guys, all right, so I just left the pottery studio a few minutes ago. I am scheduled to go back one more time tomorrow afternoon, like 5, 5.30, something like that, to hopefully pick up a pot that I set out to be fired almost a week ago. Uh, so I'm hoping that's fired. I was hoping it was done today. Um, I do have to come back and also pick up some tools I lent uh, a friend uh, today. So I do have to go back tomorrow. I wish there were some sort of exit interview for students or whatever I was considered there. Um, because I think as, as a as an owner of a studio or any business, it would be helpful to know why people aren't coming back. Don't you think? But um, yeah, I just really got tired of being spoken to in a really patronizing negative tone by one of the owners, being practically ignored by the other. And then, you know, uh, it's expensive. It's expensive for me. If I were some middle class, upper middle class, retired person, which is, makes up a majority of the people who go there, I think, um, then it might not be so expensive. But you know, it's it's 150 every two weeks, and then clay is like $30 a bag, and then glazes are like $20 a piece, and you almost always need more than one glaze. Um, it's just kind of expensive. And then things don't get fired forever. It takes forever for things to be fired there. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so I'm 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 glad I'm kind of leaving. I do still have my membership there, so if I have to go go back or and have things fired or want to go back for some reason, I can do that. I do have. Let me get out of this car. It's getting hot in here. I'm of course at a Goodwill. Um, I do have a little miniature kiln that someone gave me. One of the uh, other people at the studio, who's no longer here, um, gave me a miniature kiln a little and it's um 110 or 120 whatever the voltage is for regular appliances uh, it's a tiny kiln so um i've done some uh youtubing to find out how to operate the kiln so um yeah i just gotta get buy some cement board or something to put between the kiln and the wall of my garage so i don't set the place aflame but um yeah let me talk to you later this motorcycle's loud and I'm going to pop into Goodwill. I'll see you soon. I'm very pleased with myself. I walked out with one item. It's an ottoman for Eleanor. Doesn't that sound like a children's book? An ottoman for Eleanor. <laughs> but she's going to love it. She'll like to hide under it and she'll 
flop herself on top of it. So very, very happy with that. Hey guys, how are you? All right, so I just had a bite to eat and then I popped over to the airport to my P.O. box knowing that I had two packages at least. I was hoping one of them was cat treats because I don't know when it was, but it wasn't that long ago. I, I spent like $75 on cat treats and then I'm almost out. Like, I don't know how that happened, but so I was hoping my order from Amazon, my cat treats were there. They were not, so I'm gonna have to hit Walmart. But another package was, and it's something I ordered on a whim from eBay. Oh, um, so do you remember I sold that $300 table? Well, that night I was just browsing eBay. Um, I have a little growing collection of cat figurines, little cat, a little porcelain or ceramic cat figurines, usually vintage. Do not, please, I love you so much. Don't send me one. <laughs> Don't send me one. I know what I like and I'll, I'll get it. Um, but um, I promised myself when I got my house, I wasn't going to fill it with cat things. Like I'm already a crazy cat daddy. So I didn't want to have a whole house full of cat figurines. Well, that's changing apparently. Uh, so I have this little collection I'm gro I have growing and I saw this guy and he was only $8 plus $6 shipping. I just sold a table for $300. So I figured I'll get him. And I am so happy I did. Look at this little kitty. Look at him. Oh my God. He's so cute. <gasps> Look at him. Oh, I love him. I love him. He's so cute. And it's super, super vintage, but it's perfectly white. I'm not sure if you can tell. There's no staining, no dust, nothing. But the sticker is very old. It's by a company called Brins out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, made in Japan. So this is terribly, terribly vintage, but I mean, it's in fantastic shape. Look at that face. <gasps> Oh, I had to have it. I'm so excited. In particular, look look at the chest. Makes me think of Eleanor, all that fluffy little belly, but very happy. And look, free bubble wrap. So this is about as exciting as my day has been. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to head home. I'm going to put him right here. Uh, I'm going to head home and uh, give the cat some cat treats. And then I probably have to go shopping for more, but blah, 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 blah. Nothing really is happening so far. I do apologize, but we'll see what else the day brings. All right, I'll see you soon. Hey there, hi there, ho there. All right, so it is 6.33 in the evening and I had a distinct feeling that absolutely nothing was gonna happen today that was worth uh, Vlogtober. So I figured since tomorrow is going to be a very big day for me and that I'll be meeting some family I've never met before. If you've not seen yesterday's video, go watch that. Um, so I figured I would go through my family photos and see if there's any kind of photographs I could take with me to share with them. And uh, in going through those thick pictures, I figured, you know what, let me show you guys some family photographs. It will be enough, uh, at least something mildly interesting for somebody on Vlogtober. So what I did, because I don't have a flatbed scanner, I used my phone and an app to scan each photograph to make it really, really nicely presentable to share with you here. Um, then I, I uh, put together a video, it took me like an hour, hour and 20 minutes, over an hour, to put together a little video editing the photograph, a little blur about the photograph, another photograph, and so on. So there was a, a video of uh, introduction, showing you photographs and then talking a little bit about them. Then after editing that together, a little bit of editing that together, I watched the video and somehow, for some reason, the editing software put together all of the clips of me talking together and then followed all of the, the uh, the photographs and no matter what I did, I could not get the photographs to match with the descriptions. So I'm hell bent on sharing these photographs with you. So we're doing this low tech. I'm going to show you some photographs and talk about them. And it was, it was such a nice organized video that I put together. And then when I, it wouldn't actually work with the software, I was so Oh, 
irritated, but let's look at some photographs, shall we? All right, so there's no particular order and the jump, the timeline is gonna be all over the place. So I just put together a handful of photographs I'll show you and we'll give a little, a little chat about each one. So this photograph, and I apologize, some of them are kind of glossy, so it'll be hard to see. But this photograph, look at that, is of me right after I came out of the closet. This is, I swear, probably a month or two after I came out of the closet. I had um, been going to Community College of Rhode Island. I was the student government president, which really meant nothing because there was no student government. Um, I just had a desk and a phone, so I thought it was kind of cool. But um, that summer, before I, um, at, when I came out, I had pretty much stopped eating solid food. I was dancing every night at some club and I finally cut my hair short because it had been very long for a long time. So this is the first sort of summer or fall really that I had been thinner and out of the closet with shorter hair and it was quite a time. There's a giant slice of chocolate cake in front of me. I don't know why because I wasn't really eating back then. But uh, this is a picture I might even use as my thumbnail for this photograph. This is the best I think I've ever looked in my life. Oh, no, I lie. There's another picture where I think I look better. Uh, this is of me holding my cousin Michael. Uh, and this was right after when Michael was just a couple weeks old. Look at my hair. My hair has never looked better in my life. Um, it was very thick and I had a gray streak here. I had like half a can of Aquanet in there. I was wearing a black shirt that I had cut the collar off of. It was the 80s with this like tie-dye black and blue vest. Look at my hair. Look at my jawline. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, I was I was something else. Let's see. Some These are some pictures of me. Uh, this, the summer I met my father's family. Um, this, actually, this, this picture is when I was 15. Uh, apparently, I met my grandmother and my Aunt Kathy when I was 15. And this is me. You might want to pause that if you want to see all that hair. And my, uh, my aunt on me with the sunglasses and my grandmother on my father's side there in the red hair. Um, I met them I think I went to breakfast with them somewhere and that's, I don't even remember meeting them, but I didn't meet them again until I was 30, so 15 years later. Um, this was June of that, uh, of the, the, the summer that I met my father. This is the two of us sitting down. This is totally candid. This photograph is totally candid. We're both sitting in the same posture, same leg crossed, we have a drink in the same hand. We virtually have the same body. He was a little heavier back then, uh, but I mean, I hadn't met him. I had not seen him since I was eight years old. And suddenly I look at this picture, I'm like, oh my God, I am my father. Physically, I am my father. I look very much like my father. This was probably a month or two later. They were visiting Rhode Island once again. He lives in Oklahoma. I don't talk about him very often, do I? Uh, but um, this is actually, there's a date. Oh, this is, yeah, June of 2008 uh, when I, my father was there visiting his sister, Joanne, and I was over for dinner. There we go. And this is probably the, one of the last pictures I have with him. Uh, this is later on that summer. He came to visit me in um, in Boston and uh, once again notice the posture like that wasn't planned it's just like it's weird I fall right into the same posture uh, I'm basically my father which can be kind of frightening if you think about it he's he's not the most popular guy um, my father just as a fun note because you guys never hear about him uh, he does he's alive he's alive he lives in Oklahoma uh, I had planned on going to meet him uh, or see him back before COVID, but COVID kind of ruined that. And I haven't had the urge to meet him again for some reason. Um, he has never been interested in having uh, a child uh, and uh, has sort of made that abundantly clear. And I'm not one to push the point. 
This is a picture of my mother, and I don't know if you've ever seen my mother. It's hard to see her because her face is uh, occluded by um, a, a, a drink, which is how she was all the time. But in this picture, this was, I don't know what year this was, 81, 82. She had broken her wrist. She had fallen down drunk into a ditch along the road on on um, Patch Air Force Base, I think, in Germany. She broke her wrist drunk. Um, didn't spill a drop of her drink, but she broke her wrist. And this is on New Year's, I think. She had um, was drinking some Irish coffee. Um, my grandmother, uh, Gemma, she wore that same exact style wig for 30 years. But this woman, my grandmother, this lady, saved my life. When I ran away from my mother, around the time that other photograph was taken, um, I told my um, mother that I wanted to be in my aunt's wedding, my Aunt Elaine. Uh, aunt Elaine got married in 1984. I think it was August 7th. So uh, I think it was August 3rd, um, I flew to Rhode Island to be in the wedding. Uh, we had been living in Germany with my mother's second and then third husband. Um, so she was like, yeah, sure, go be in the wedding, go to Rhode Island. And when I got to Rhode Island, I told my grandmother I wasn't going back. There were no plans. I hadn't told anybody. But um, since I could walk on water, my grandmother let me stay and um, my life was saved. And the trajectory of my life was was moved. This is a picture. I'm not quite sure why I'm showing it to you. But uh, this is a picture of me on the right there, on the side over here. My Aunt Patty right there. And my, my dog, BJ. I love BJ. BJ was one of the ugliest dogs ever. She was half Pekingese, half Chihuahua. Hideous. Um, back when I lived in Alabama, blank. Um, I was 10 years old. We lived in a double wide trailer right outside Fort Rucker in Alabama. In um, Yeah, right outside Fort Rucker. I'm trying to think of the name of the town. Daleville. Uh, my mother brought a dog home. Uh, we had a dog and uh, that was that was BJ. Later on, a year later, we moved to Germany and that dog uh, went to live with my grandparents. And um, I love BJ. I really do. I loved that dog. This was, this is me. I don't know what year. This is 2008, June, so that June 10th. I'm with my grandmother. That's my father's mother. And there I am, clean shaven. I was still kind of coloring my hair back then. This is July of 99. July of 99. This is the, the day I met my father. Uh, and this is when I met his sister. Uh, and that's me. There you go. And that's his sister, Kathy. I think she was showing me her nipple, which isn't really unlike her. Um, and this is that same day uh, in the pool. Uh, I had it in my mind that I was going to impress somebody by being strong enough to have Kathy and my cousin, Caitlin, um, on my shoulders. I don't know why I did this. Um, I think I hurt my back, but I, for some reason, was trying to show off and I have two people on my shoulders. Um, let's look at, this is a wedding picture. Have, have you guys ever seen a picture of my wedding? I don't think you have. This is a picture of my wedding. Um, my husband, my ex-husband, Dan, you'll notice we're not wearing shoes. Dan and I were both wearing uh, the same outfit. I bought, I bought those outfits white linen shirts and white linen pants at Marshall's. I got our wedding bands, $19 a piece, titanium wedding bands at some outlet shop somewhere on the Cape. And we got married on the beach at Cape Cod on Herring Cove. And the sky, I'm not sure if you can see, the sky was like pearlescent. It was beautiful. It was moving rapidly, the clouds, because Hurricane Bill was going to be making landfall. And um, it should have been a sign as to what my wedding, my marriage would be like. But uh, it was a beautiful day. I love my wedding. I didn't love my marriage, but I love my wedding. Um, these are some random pictures. This is my aunt Joanne. This is my father's sister. I don't see a date on here, but it is Easter. No, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. I walked in the door. Joanne and I looked at each other and we were just stunned. We both were wearing black 
leather jeans. We were both wearing a black cashmere turtleneck, both of them designed by Donna Karen. Different, uh, mine was men's, hers was ladies, but hers was a little bit more sheer. But we both walked in with black boots, black leather jeans, a black cashmere uh, turtleneck sweater, and um, I, my hair was, I dyed my hair black, 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 black back then. And if you notice how thin I was, see how skinny I was? See how skinny? I wasn't eating anything because those jeans were very, very tight. Um, this is a moment of um, trans, uh, let's see, uh, I don't know. I, yes, buddy, I know. I'm, I'm talking to my friends here. Hold on a minute. Um, this is a picture of a time of change. Um, I had just cut my hair short. I was on a place called River Road in Providence. That's me. Look at me with the little porn mustache and that big flop of hair on top of my head. That's my friend Juan. I was holding him up. Uh, that day, Juan lent me a pair of jeans that were in his trunk. They were a size 38. I was not a size 38. I was at best a size 40. I mean, ambitiously size 40. Uh, but I wanted those jeans on because I thought they were skinny. They were acid wash. You can't tell. Um, they were a size 38. And I remember taking those jeans off and the welts. If, if you've ever been heavy, you know what I'm talking about. The welts of uh, on my skin around my waist where those jeans were just so tight for so long. When I took those off, I was like itching like crazy. Um, but I was thrilled that I kind of fit in a size 38 pair of jeans. And uh, that's right after I cut my hair, before it was very, very long. But yeah, that's me with hair. Um, this, I'll show you this in a minute. This was, my hair was a little bit longer. This is when I was student government president. This is the uh, end of my freshman year of junior uh, junior college. I never graduated. Uh, just before I, I went away for summertime, we had an event at the college for the, stu the children of students at the college. And I dressed as a giant chicken. Look at that hair. Uh, it went down to the middle of my back. I was dressed as a giant chicken. Uh, I don't know why. I don't remember why. But I do remember terrifying every child within 50 feet. Uh, not on purpose. I was just a giant monster chicken. And uh, I scared everyone around me. And uh, it was it was a fun day. <laughs> it was a fun day. I'll always remember that day. This is... Um, earlier in the year, I used to work at the audio visual department at Community College of Rhode Island. And I really can't, I can't, you can't see how hideous I really am here. Uh, but I'm wearing a, a, a tie dye t-shirt I made myself, gray suspenders, a pair of disintegrating black plastic shoes that were meant to look like, I don't know, white socks. And, um, I... I don't know how often I even showered back then. I was just a dis I was, I was something out of a movie. I was so disgusting. Um, yeah, but that was me uh, at in a junior college. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, a high school picture. Let's look at some school pictures. Let's look at some school pictures. This is my senior prom. It's a small picture, so it's hard to see. This is me at my senior prom. Get ready for this. All right. I know. I'm so sorry. This is so low tech. Can you even see that? That's my hair. That's my date, Lynn. She made that dress. We did things like that in the 80s. Um, it's a, a, a lace cap sleeve. My tie and cummerbund were mint. It matched her dress better in person than in photograph. Uh, Lynn um, made that dress out of satin which stains with water. So if you spill water on it, it will leave a big, big mark all around the, the, uh, the where it was wet. Lynn spilled water on her, the bodice of her dress. She went into the bathroom to dry off and clean up a little bit. She met another young lady in the lavatory there and then came out and told me she was leaving with said young lady. It was uh, a young lady that was not at our prom. She just met a pretty girl in the bathroom and decided to leave with the girl. Um, so I called up my friend Stephanie and um, 
after the prom, uh, Stephanie and me and a few uh, people from school went to the beach. Um, I got promptly um, sick after drinking almost four liters of Bartles and James wine coolers. Anyone remember Bartles and James wine coolers? I drank two bottles of that. Kind of got a little stoned, but uh, threw up all over the place. There's my senior prom. Uh, this is a picture of me. Let's see, go back to school pictures. This is a picture. I was probably in the eighth grade, seventh or eighth grade. I think this must have been eighth grade. Um, I am fat. Look at that. Look at that. This That's me. But in the 80s, they did this sort of special effect where they showed two pictures superimposed but look at the look at the face <gasps> oh my god i cried and cried and cried before this uh before i left for school that day but my mother was violent uh and beat me horrible that day um because my room was dirty but i was also um i think she was ashamed of me at that point because i was i was heavy i had boobs no one knew i was a boy my voice hadn't broken yet. I had boobs. I looked like this, um, but uh, that was her dress. That was her jacket and her sweater, because I didn't have clothes that fit me at the time. That wasn't like a t-shirt. Yeah, that was just an awful day. Um, this was probably a year before that. Also heavy. Look at the hair. Can you even recognize me there? I guess my eyes look the same, but yeah, fat and yeah. This is my senior year. Now, this is um, not the picture that went in my yearbook, but it's in that that photo shoot. There's a scratch on the picture. I, I couldn't, I don't know where this was, but that was me. Uh, that was me. I had tr tried to kind of uh, lose a little bit of weight. I was contemplating coming out of the closet. My hair was gelled. I cut it short into kind of a little mullet. Notice the bow tie on the blue and black shirt yeah it was the 80s um this is one of my favorite pictures i i was very aware of the camera back then uh, i was walking with my friend juan it's hard to see but look my hair was really good i kind of felt like i looked like one of the brat pack or the rat pack out of the 40s and 50s my hair looked very like 1950s uh, movie star kind of, I don't know, really, it was a good look. I felt very Ralph Lauren in that outfit with the black penny loafers. Yeah, that was a great, that was a good day. Um, other photographs, let's go here. This is a picture of me uh, right after my brother Mark died. Um, when Mark died, my mother was inconsolable and useless. Uh, but she wasn't ever really that useful. Um, my father took me away for two weeks to give her a chance to do whatever she had to do, fall apart. Uh, so I was in Germany where he lived uh, for two weeks. And this is a picture his wife took. There's a bit of something sticky on the front of the picture. It's a little bit weird. But um, I do remember her telling me to smile. And, you know... My, I just watched my brother die under the back wheel of a pickup truck, you know, so I wasn't like smiley, but I thought the picture was sort of haunting. Doesn't it look like the, it just looks like the, a movie poster for some very sad film, but that was me. I don't know what's in my hand. Oh, it's like some sort of little rabbit, a little toy of some kind. I can see me in the, in the reflection in the, the glass. I just, I like the picture because it's sort of well-constructed, you know, but um, it was a very sad time. Not a sad time. This was not a sad time. This is a picture of me sitting in a beauty supply store. Uh, that's boss. Look at me. <laughs> Smug. Um, this was my favorite job in the world until I became a flood attendant. I worked at uh, Boston Beauty Supply on Mass Ave in Lexington, Massachusetts. I used to take uh, two trains, then a bus, and then walk a quarter of a mile every day to get to work and from work. And all for $9 an hour. <laughs> um, but um, I loved that place. It was my absolute haven, my heaven. It was my um, safe place. 
I still remember everything about that. I I can still tell you all these products on the shelves. But um, this was when I was starting to do makeup on that counter right there. I was pretending to know what I was doing with makeup. Uh, and then uh, shortly after that, I became sort of a fake makeup artist at Lord & Taylor. And then I got a real job at Neiman Marcus selling makeup and blah, blah, blah. Um, so this is, I'm going to show you, this is me when I think I look sexy. I, I don't think I've ever looked better in my life. I was on my second cruise. My first cruise with, was with my boyfriend, Stephen. Yes, his name was Stephen. Um, he introduced me to cruises. I loved them. I broke up with Stephen. And the next cruise I went on, I went on by myself. And I, I, I will show you the picture in a second. Because you know it's all about the story. So I'm on the cruise. And I promised myself I was not going to say no. I was going to say yes to everything. Because I didn't want to like be in a lump. Like by yourself on a cruise. You know. I wanted to do things. Meet people. See things. So I'm on the cruise. I'm wearing a little red Speedo. I know. Um, I Yeah. And um, it, it looked good. It was appropriate for the time and the place. Uh, but um, I wore a red Speedo. And someone was walked up to me and said, Hey, would you be on the volleyball team? There's a volleyball game between the, the uh, passengers, the cruise passengers, and the crew, the, the, the ship crew. And I said, no, oh my God, no, because I hated getting water in my eyes. I didn't, I didn't know how to really play volleyball. I'm not athletic. I didn't want to make a fool of myself. So I said, no. And then I was, they were turning to walk away. And I went, wait, 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 wait. Yes, 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 yes. I jumped in the pool and I had the best time of my life. It was the moment of my life that everything turned. It really, I can tell you, this photograph captures the moment that I literally turned my life and moved in a better direction. And here we are. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ta-da! I, <laughs> I know this isn't much. And I know you're like, uh, wow, Stephen, okay, fine. Well, you're tan. Um, yeah, I was really tan. Look how tan I was. Look at that picture. I love this photo. I think I've never in my life looked better. I think I look very good in this picture. And um, yeah, my beard looks great. Um, I love this photo. This is, this is a picture that captures a moment where I literally, I felt my life changing. I met, um, I met my ex-boyfriends, the couple that I used to date. That's another story. Um, but I also met Juan and Steven and Phil, who are my friends in Atlanta, who were the people who helped me really transition from living in my van in Florida, I know I'm so sexy, um, to um, staying in Atlanta and then getting this job I have right now. So it's like that cruise was the, the, the turning point for me. And I'll tell you, it was me getting in that pool saying yes to something that made me afraid and uncomfortable, saying yes. This moment is when um, I was able to meet amazing people who could then help me transform my life. Ta -da! Um, all right, so this is a picture that's not very interesting. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures of my brother and some pictures of me in drag. I know. Um, all right, so let's go to my brother first. This is just a handful. I don't have a lot of pictures of Mark. Because back in the day, back, you know, 30, 40 years ago, we didn't have cell phone cameras that were with us all the time. But this is a picture that um, I really love. It's Mark on the, with the stripe, with the wide black and white stripes. Me on the other side in front of a train set. Um, I was probably five. Mark was probably about three. You can't see there. Can you? You can't see. But uh, do you remember the, the band 10,000 Maniacs? Um, I had exactly the same haircut that N Natalie Merchant had in 10,000 Maniacs. Like the perfect bob with the wavy bit down the front. I had exactly 
Natalie Merchant's haircut um, uh, that she would discover maybe 20 years after this picture was taken. But um, I love this picture. I look very happy. Um, and Mark looks apprehensive. <laughs> but um, this is another picture of Mark and me. This was taken in March of 1977. Um, Mark died April 19th of 1977. So this is right before he died. And it's hard to make out in this photograph, but he was happy. Look at that smile. And I don't know what I'm eating, but I look pretty happy too. My cousin Susan, the round one in the back. <laughs> Sorry, Susan in the back. She always was a little full figured. She later in life had uh, that laparoscopic, whatever it is, the the um, surgery done. Uh, and then there's Scott uh, uh, right in the front on this side over here. That's my other cousin, Scott. Um, I never really uh, got along with them so much. I've seen them once in the last, I don't know, 15 years. Um, yeah. This is a picture uh, that I, I, I value and I think is very sad, but I'm, I'm glad I have it. Um, my mother, uh, at one point, tried to be an adult and get a job. And uh, she the only babysitter she could find was this woman that could, um, what was her name? Clara, Clara, her name was Clara. Um, she was Spanish, she did not know English. Her daughter, uh, Marisol knew a little bit of English, but, uh, so it was a strange place to be, uh, spend time because, you know, we didn't know Spanish at all and whatever, but this is a picture of me, Mark and, um, Clara's daughter, Marisol. And, uh, in the back here, someone wrote this for Clara cause she didn't speak English. Uh, Sam, here's this picture. We are Mark. Steve and Marisol. This picture was taken on uh, February February seventh, nineteen seventy seven, and it is a remember for you. Uh, yours truly, friends, Clara, something, something, Marisol, and um, it's dated four twenty one nineteen seventy seven. So Mark might, would have just died a couple days. Um, uh, and uh, then Clara sent this picture to my mother. And I just, I love the picture. Um, I don't know what we what we did down here, but we must have been coloring or something. But, um, all right, so uh, these are two pictures. Are you bored yet? Sorry. Uh, these are two pictures that I also treasure because they, they catch me right as I was learning some bad skill sets. <laughs> there are two pictures from my birthday in 1980. So I was turning 10. Um, this is a Polaroid right here. It says, Steve gets drunk, 3, 1980. Can you see the picture? Can you see the picture? Um, I was drunk out of my mind. Uh, we drank a lot of Hofbrau, which is a German beer. It's very uh, uh, highly, it's very, very seriously alcohol. Uh, it's high alcohol content is what I meant to say. Um, and um, my have you ever been shotgunned? My, um, I could not smoke marijuana. I couldn't smoke pot. Well, back here it was hash. We were smoking hash back then. But ha it was very, very harsh in my throat, and I would cough and I would choke. So my mother would take a deep hit. Uh, and then exhale in my mouth while I was inhaling. That's called shotgunning. So I was drunk, drunk, drunk on Hofbrau. And then she, um, we were smoking and I'm 10, mind you. And this wasn't the first time I've been smoking and drinking since I was like eight. Um, but I was so high and so drunk. I went downstairs. She had one lipstick and she had one blush and I put on lipstick blush. I put balloons in my t-shirt and I, a little umbrella hat on. Uh, and look at my pose. Look at my pose. I have to say that's very good. Look at my hand. I don't know. And my elbow, the angle. Look at the line of my two arms. I mean, it's the perfect little modeling pose. Who knew I was a natural? Um, but um, yeah, that was my birthday. 
1980. And then there was another picture, uh, same thing, same, but this one says he could never hold his beer. I'm 10. And some people were surprised that I was gay. Um, so on that same line with me wearing balloons on my shirt, um, these are two pictures of me in drag. They're very old. This one, it's literally a photo booth photograph from a bar called Avalon in Boston. It was gay on Sundays. And this was the first time I did drag. And there you go. Can you see that? That was my hair. That was my hair. Ta-da! Yeah. Um, that was almost all my hair, I should say. There was a, a, a fall or a hair piece in the back to add the length. But for the most part, that was my hair. The brooch at my neck was a brooch that I bought myself when I was 21. My, my grandmother gave me $50. I spent $20 on a brooch and I spent the rest of it on a pork pie felt hat. Gay much? I don't know. Uh, but I, I think I looked like a 1940s sort of mom in a movie, like a, 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 a movie or maybe a, a, a really witty sidekick in a movie. I don't know. I felt like I was a movie star, 40s kind of thing. And then this, this is a photograph. It's a much loved Polaroid you can see. Back in the day before cell phones, people used to walk around bars with cameras and they would take Polaroid snapshots of people and you would give them five dollars that's how you would commemorate your night out with your friends because god knows we didn't have cell phones back then thank goodness could you imagine <gasps> oh my god my life um but this is a photograph and um i have to say i think when you see it i think i look like demi moore in the late 80s what do you think that's me right in the middle with the cheetah what do you think yeah hello <laughs> yeah, that was me. That was me. Go ahead and pause it if you want to look a little a little deeper. Um, uh, that was a fun, fun night. I was wearing um, four inch heel with a little bit of a platform. I'm six foot two, so I was six foot six in that outfit. My skirt was very, very short, and uh, I had a great night. See this guy right here, right there. He was in love with me that night. He was in love with me. He could not get enough. He said he fell in love with me that night and he wanted to see me again, but only in drag. How heartbreaking. He was so handsome back then. But yeah, that was that was a good night. So that's a, that is a handful of photographs and a handful of stories. I didn't know what else to do for you on Vlogtober uh, because there's nothing else going on today. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that or found that mildly amusing. Um, I loved seeing myself with hair. Um, I love seeing, um, gosh, I really love this picture. <laughs> I don't want to be that kind of person that puts pictures of themselves up on the walls, but man, I could, I just love that picture. Um, but yeah, there you go. That is Vlogtober day 27. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring. And um, that's it. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. I don't know if I can film anything, but uh, make sure to watch. I think you'd find it interesting. All right. See you later.